Well, hello everyone and welcome and thank you for being here tonight. I'm Ryan Murray, the artistic director and conductor of Music in the Mountains, and we are so happy to welcome you to our virtual Fall Fest. We have a really special artist joining us tonight. Tessa Lark is an award-winning violinist, a Grammy nominee, and an absolutely spectacular artist. And she's put together a really amazing and unique program that spans over 300 years of violin. Okay, everybody, I think that we're back. I just have to get um, Tessa back with us, but just give me one second. Hopefully I'm coming through now. Sorry, we had the power just flick on and off, which is, I guess, a Friday the 13th kind of thing. Okay, and we're back. So, sorry about that again. I've always worried about what would happen if the power went out, and now we know. So, as I was saying before I cut off there, we're thrilled to bring you these concerts, and it's our generous donors and patrons that make music a great part of this wonderful community. And I'm so happy to have Tessa here with us to perform. If you want to find more about how you can support Music in the Mountains, you can visit us at musicinthemountains.org. And I want to send a particular thank you out to Smarter Broadband, our generous sponsors for the entire season of virtual concerts. So let's get on to the music. So Tessa is going to start with Georg Telemann's Fantasia No. 4 for solo violin and follow that up with one of her own pieces. Enjoy!
Okay, well, thank you, Tessa, so much for joining us tonight. Thanks so much for having me here. This is fun. I'm glad our power is back on and we're we're able to connect here. Yes. <laughs> so where are you co joining us from tonight? I am in my New York City apartment, and this is my little music studio. That's great. So it's just, just after 10 o'clock out where you are then. Yeah, yeah, but um, I'm a night owl, so this this feels good to me. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. So I really enjoyed the first two pieces on the program, and it looks like I might have just lost Tessa, um, but let's see what happens here. If I don't get her back in one second, we'll go ahead and start the next piece, but this is actually her on the line right now. So can you hear me? <laughs> Yes, I can. All right. <laughs> Friday the 13th. It is Friday I'm the 13th. I'm telling you. <laughs> so what I was saying is that these first two pieces, we're already seeing your unique style and voice come through. And can you tell us a bit about how you put this program together and maybe the, the influence or connection between folk music and classical music? Yeah, um, I started programming solo violin recitals kind of like this um, after I discovered the 12 Telemann solo fantasias. Um, that was number four that I um, started out with. And I was immediately struck by the improvisatory and free nature of all of those Telemann fantasias. The seventh one is the first one I heard. Um, and so I decided to learn them. And in learning them, I was just noticing so much folk influence in those pieces. And of course, in a lot of Baroque music, um, there's use of so many different um, uh, 
uh, originally folk forms of dance, like the Chacon um, box, very famous Chacon was actually um, a Spanish dance before it became what we know of now as the Chacon. So I was just really struck by how much folk music has influenced the greatest composers and the greatest music that we know of. And so I um, sort of started crafting these recitals and um, making my own tunes that are actually inspired by classical music. So sort of reversing what was happening, which was classical composers taking from folk music. And um, that tune that I wrote is actually inspired from some motives of Maurice Ravel's. Uh, you can't tell, hopefully, <laughs> but um, just using some some wisdom from other composers to make oh, new great. fiddle tunes. That is great. Yeah. So up next is a Bach partita, but you have an interesting interlude in this. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, again, the, the same thing um, with with box music. Um, it's it's not anything new that I'm doing, really. It's um, the folk influence was already there, but I'm just um, replacing different movements and putting in um, traditional tunes. So the tune that I'm going to play in between, this would be the first and I think fifth movement of the E major partita. I'm playing um, Boy in the Gap which is a tune I learned from a Martin Hayes recording, actually his um, most recent album with them called The Blue Room. It's, he just has this super, super magical recording of it with clarinet. And so um, he's, he's a fiddler who loves to put his fiddle music in unusual situations. So I was inspired to sort of do what he did again in a, in a different way and replacing um, a, another dance movement of Vox with this fiddle tune. Great. Well, we look forward to hearing it. Thank you. 
Well, I just loved that. And I, I think that that fits in, it just fits so nicely and it informs the, the last movement or the, the, the third movement. It's just really great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's so fun to pair um, seemingly disparate music together. And then suddenly you start even noticing motives that are the same and, and you would think they were maybe written together. Um, but I, I just love doing that. It, it just sort of changes your frame of mind as you're listening to something. Absolutely. So next is another one of the great violin pieces, but you've got a unique spin on that as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking as um, as I was playing, uh, this is super fun, by the way, to just sit and watch the recital happen <laughs> without the nerves. Um, but I was just thinking about how it used to be that performers would actually have some entertainment between different movements, especially during symphonies or concertos. Um, the story that I love in particular is the Beethoven Violin Concerto premiere and this guy is sight reading the piece, first of all, and I think he juggled or something in between the first and second movement, which is wild to think of because it's such a, um, you know, ethereal, pristine piece of music. But anyway, um, I've, I've sort of taken to doing that. And this is Isai's fourth sonata in E minor, which I think was his favorite of the six sonatas that he wrote, um, and certainly one of my very favorites, um, dedicated to Fritz Kreisler, who's another one of my favorite composers and violinists. But um, between the second and third movements here, I wrote another tune that was inspired by the motive that repeats throughout this entire sonata, especially in the second movement, the Sarabande, um, the, the motive that repeats over and over. I just wrote a fiddle tune and I, I stuck it in there um, in, in between the, the second and third. And then the third movement um, has, you know, it sounds a little like the Bach Preludio, definitely was inspired by Chrysler's Preludium and Allegro, but I swear there's a little bit of fiddling in there. I know I'm, I'm biased to hear that because I grew up in Kentucky, but um, it's it's super fun and, and such a beautiful piece in general. So I hope folks don't mind the fiddle interlude. In I don't there. think anyone will mind at all. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. Well, we can't hear it uh, on YouTube, but I'm sure there's thunderous applause going on in people's <laughs> homes. That was just great. Oh, thank you so much. One of my very favorite pieces, that one. So we're moving now towards some more contemporary music. The next piece on the program is by American composer John Crigliano. And can you tell us a bit about your history with this piece? Yeah, I actually came across this piece um Full disclosure, he wrote it for um, a Tchaikovsky violin competition. Um, I think this was in 2011, and it was the commissioned work. Um, they're standard, um, usually commissioned pieces for violin competitions, and so Stomp was the one. And I didn't actually get to the round to play the thing, but I was aware of the piece. Um, and flash forward a year later, John was actually um, a juror for the finals of the Naumburg violin competition, which I was lucky enough to actually win as opposed to getting kicked out in the first round. <laughs> and so I met John, um, luckily under those circumstances, he didn't hear me at the Tchaikovsky. And he said, he's like, your background is really peculiar. I see that you grew up in Kentucky with bluegrass. He's like, I wrote this piece stomp. I think you would really like it. And I didn't tell him like, Oh, funny. Um, I just totally ate dirt at it. The competition <laughs> that you wrote that for. Um, so I said, cool, I'll check it out sometime. And so then he sent me like a signed score a few months later and I just didn't touch it. And then I played his red violin concerto for him on his 80th birthday year. And so we re-met and he said when we met there, he was like, I loved your 
performance thanks for playing for me and he's like do you know i wrote this piece called stomp like i i really think you'd love it and then he sent me another score so i have like three scores of this thing <laughs> in my room and so i finally decided you know i should really like try and play this thing so flash forward through all of that stuff john and i have become friends and he has allowed me the great honor of recording and releasing the first commercial recording of Stomp, which will come out in the spring of next year on a CD that I have called the Stradgrass Sessions. But it's a super fun tune inspired very clearly by fiddle music, um, American folk styles, blues and, and bluegrass. Um, and as the title implies, there's some extra techniques involved, too. <laughs> yeah. Any any complaints from the neighbors from all the stomping or? <laughs> you know, I, I am on the fifth floor, the top floor of this apartment, but luckily there um, there's a really rambunctious family underneath us and the kids are always, I can hear them running around. It almost sounds like they're above me. They're so like <laughs> stomping. So, so hopefully they didn't mind. I heard some competing stomps. I was afraid somebody was hitting my <laughs> floor with a broomstick, but you'll see it, it, it looks really wild, but my fiance, Michael Thurber is a bass player and he's got this travel bass case and it was the most hollow thing that we have in our apartment. So I used his base case and stumped on it. So if anybody ever wondered if those things are really sturdy, they totally are. It withstood <laughs> all of that stomping for this recording. Nice. All right, well, this is Crigliano Stomp. Thank you. 
I love the shaking foot at the end there. <laughs> I'm so glad you left that in there. Thank you. <laughs> what a cool piece. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's it's such a it's such a barn burner. It's it's really amazing. That's one of the gifts of Crilliano's music, I think. It's always just so visceral and so fun to listen to. Nice, nice. So we've come to the end of our program tonight, and we're going to finish up with two of your own pieces. So maybe tell us a little bit about those and about your your venture into composition. Yeah, um, so these um, pin ultimate piece is uh, my Appalachian fantasy. And I actually wrote that um, because I was recording a CD that's called Fantasy that's um, out now, which wasn't actually inspired by the Telemann Fantasias. Um, but I wanted to add a nod to my Kentucky heritage um, and was trying to figure out how to do that um, and make it related to the other very classical music that was on the disc. And this was before I started doing these types of recitals. Um, and Schubert Fantasy is on there and there's a uh, poignancy and melancholy to Schubert's music um, through its simplicity that really resonates with me and reminds me a lot of old time fiddle music. There's a lot of sorrow and heartache in that music. And so I decided to use one of those Schubert melodies and turn it into an old time style um, ballad in a way. And then I follow that with a tune that's inspired by a Brahms melody and then I finish it all up with Bonaparte's Retreat, which is actually the melody that Aaron Copeland used for his hoedown from Rodeo. So a, a bunch of nods to a bunch of different traditions and things in, in that um, fantasy um, and a lot of borrowing, which a lot of composers I discovered did. And that's been my way into composition is sort of finding melodies that I totally love and trying to figure out what makes them amazing and playing around with it um, to craft my own tune. Um, that's been an amazing learning experience. And the other amazing learning experience is just um, working with Michael Thurber, um, my fiance, and we do um, duo projects together for violin and bass. And the last tune on this program called Until We Meet Again um, apt for these times of quarantine. Um, it was the very last tune that we wrote for a CD that we did together um, called Invention. And we needed one more tune to sort of flesh out the CD. And the night before the recording session, Michael and I were just sitting around and he said, I think I got it. And he went to the piano and a tune just came to him. And I sort of played along as he was sort of reciting it to me. And then together we came up with this tune that sort of plays like a in a traditional Irish song in a way. Absolutely. And I've, you know, I've gotten to hear both of these as we've put this together and I just love both of them. So I know, I know our audience will Thank too. Thank you. Thanks so much.
It's hard to uh, to want to break the silence after that, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, the I that that piece resonated with us when we were writing it. Yeah, I've been singing it all week now since I since I've heard it. It's just fantastic. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to sort of figure this new program together. That was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, well, we all really enjoyed hearing it, and you know, it's. It's a great reminder of the power of music to bring us together as a community. And as we're separated right now for so many reasons, it's just fantastic to spend time together listening to amazing music and sharing it with everybody. So thank you so much for being a part of that with us tonight. Oh my gosh, of course. And it's been fun to, to be seeing the live chat. Like you said, it's, it's, it's not the same as a live experience, but at least it, it scratches some sort of itch. And it's just amazing that you all at Music in the Mountains can offer this for pay what you can. I think that's absolutely incredible and just always warms my heart when there's support for the arts right now. Well, the community is really special and, and we've got great support for the arts. And as you say, all of our concerts that have been online are pay what you can. And that's because of all of you out there that make them possible. So thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you can join us on Monday at 7 for a discussion of Giacomo Puccini, the ultimate dramatist. And on December 11th, we'll be on YouTube again with a 
really home for the holidays concert or maybe holidays from home this time but it's going to be a great show again so thank you all for joining us tonight thank you tessa you can always find more about music in the mountains at music in the mountains.org so thank you all and we hope to see you again soon at music in the mountains thanks everyone